What up everybody? Instructor Beats back again here today with some fraction knowledge. We are going to be talking about partitioning regions into equal parts today. So let's grab some equal parts and start building something special. Our objective today, today I will be able to understand that a fraction is an equal part of a region or whole and how to write a unit fraction to represent that equal part. To help us start to understand equal parts, we have our Instructed Beats candy bar here. Not yet for sale, but coming soon. So let's unwrap it and take a look at our candy bar. Now, obviously this is not a real candy bar, but we're gonna think about this as one whole candy bar. So the big thing to realize is that a fraction is an equal part of a whole. So if we're gonna take our whole candy bar, for instance, right, and we want to split it into, and this might not be perfect, but I'm gonna do my best right here, three equal parts. Ooh, that's kind of crooked, right? But we have three equal parts. We would say that we just split this into thirds, right? And we might remember this from some of our prior lessons. So we have three equal parts, which means we can uh, call this thirds. Now, it doesn't matter if we split this whole up and down or side to side. So if I took this candy bar, and again, I'm gonna do my best to make straight lines in equal groups, and I split it this way, okay, there we go. We're gonna pretend like that's perfect, okay? And I split it this way into three equal parts, I still have made thirds, okay? Because I split it into three equal parts or three equal regions, and each part is exactly the same size. Now this is a little bit off because my handwriting's not great, right? But this allows us to call it thirds. What if I split it into three parts, but they weren't equal, right? So here I had a smaller piece and then a bigger piece and then a kind of medium sized piece. This is not a fraction, right? Because we can't call it thirds because they're not equal parts. Our key understanding, our key focus is that fractions are an equal part of a whole or a group, but we're gonna worry about the groups later. Right now we wanna understand that a fraction is when we take a whole and we split it into equal parts. All right, so here I have duplicated our candy bar. I made it a little bit smaller, right? But let's pretend that each of these rectangles or area models is one whole candy bar, okay? And so I'm gonna show you some of the fractions that we typically work with. So if I split this into two equal parts, right? And I could either do it up and down or I could do it side to side or I could even do it diagonal. Okay, we're gonna pretend like that's perfect. If I split it into two equal parts, I've split it into two halves, okay? So each of these halves is one out of two pieces. And what we just made is a unit fraction, which is what one equal part of the whole is worth. So when I split this whole into halves, each one was worth one half. So if I wanted to write my unit fraction in words, I would write down one half, or I could write that in fraction form, which is one half or one out of two equal pieces. So the next fraction we typically work with is gonna be thirds, okay? And for the rest of the time, I'll just split it up and down, but we, did, we could do diagonal if it makes equal groups. It's kind of hard to do thirds diagonally. So we just split this into thirds, and each piece is gonna be worth one out of three. So our unit fraction here is gonna be one third, and we write that as a fraction one out of three, right? The bottom part of our fraction, which we call the denominator, we'll talk about that later, tells us how many equal pieces we have total, and we are talking about one out of those three pieces. And again, we call that a unit fraction, which is how much one equal part of the whole is worth. So the next one we typically work with is force. So you can make force different ways, right? You can split up as long as they're equal parts, but I'll split it up this way. Okay, and again, we're gonna pretend like my lines are straight. So if you may split a whole into four equal pieces, we call that force, and each piece is gonna be worth one fourth. So if you notice, I'm kind of running out of room here, so I kind of write the fraction with this little diagonal line, all right? And so my unit fraction is one-fourth, and I write that as a fraction, 
one out of four pieces. Again, I kind of wrote it with this diagonal line right here. That's just another way to represent a fraction, but it means the same thing. It's one out of four pieces. The next one we work with a lot is six. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that vertically. Okay, here we go, boom. And if I split one whole into six equal pieces, we call that six. And my unit fraction is gonna be one six because it's one out of six pieces. Each of the pieces is worth one out of six, right? Because then I would have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So I'm gonna write that in words saying one sixth. And I'm gonna write that as a fraction one out of six. All right, and the last fraction that we work with a lot is eights. So if I split this into four equal pieces and then an, split each of those into half, Okay, I've now made, and again, it's not perfect, because I'm not perfect, but I've now made eight equal pieces, and we call that eights. And so each of these pieces is going to be worth one out of eight. So our unit fraction here is one eighth, because that's how much each of the pieces is worth. So we're going to write that using words, one eighth, and... I'm gonna write as a fraction one out of eight. Again, the bottom part of our fraction tells us how many equal parts our whole is split into, and we're talking about one of those. Now, if you notice, you're gonna see a pattern right here. Fractions, now not halves or thirds, but most fractions end in a THS, right? So eight equal pieces, we call those eights. So that's what a fraction is, and that's how we represent one of those pieces, which we call a unit fraction. And I know I've shown you all of the holes as a rectangle or what we call the candy bar and area model, but your hole really can be any shape, right? So we could take a pizza or a circle here and we could split it into halves, right? Two halves. And so each of these pieces would be worth one half, right? One half of the pizza. It could be a triangle, right? We could split this into half, right? And again, each of those pieces would be worth one half of the triangle. So our unit fraction would be one half. Or we could do a square, right? It doesn't have to be a rectangle. It could even be a crazy shape. As long as you're taking one whole and you're splitting it into equal parts that have an equal area, they're the same size, then we can label it a fraction, right? And we can label each part using the unit fraction. So all of these are different representations of halves. And it doesn't matter what the shape looks like as long as you're taking a whole and you're splitting it into equal parts or equal regions. So let's do a U try, okay? So I'm gonna show you some shapes, and I want you to pause the video and pick the ones, pick the holes that are split into equal parts, okay? Which of these could represent a fraction, okay? So we have three different holes, and we've split them differently. Pause the video, pick the ones that are split into equal parts, and if you think it's a fraction, go ahead and write the unit fraction underneath of it. How much is each of those pieces worth. So hopefully you just pause it and you at least tried that activity. And if not, it's okay, right? Let's do it together. So first of all, this one right here is a fraction. That's a check mark because I see I have four equal pieces. So it's split into fourths. And each of them is going to be, each of these pieces is going to be worth one fourth. So our unit fraction for this is one fourth because that's how much each piece is worth. This one was not a fraction because my candy bar was split into four pieces but they weren't equal. This piece was not the same size as that piece, right? So this was not a fraction, so I didn't label a unit fraction. Now this one right here, we just turned the candy bar or the area model vertical, and that's okay. And you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, and they are in fact equal. So this is a representation of a fraction, right? That would be six. And each piece then is gonna be worth one out of six. So my unit fraction here would have been one six. So hopefully you're kind of understanding that what a fraction is and how it's an equal part of a whole. Let's take it to the next level. All right, our key thought is that fractional parts have to be equal, right? But they don't have to look exactly the same. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here I just put a grid behind this shape right here, okay? We're not really looking at the grid other, we're just gonna use it to check to see if our parts are equal. So if I, and I'm gonna use this red line, if I split this this way, right, you can very clearly see that I just made thirds because I made three equal parts, right? 
you can see that this part is equal to this part, right? Now, because each of them are made up of three units. So this one is also made up of three units and it looks the same, right? So I just made thirds right there. What if I got a little crazy right here, okay? And I split this rectangle this way, okay? Into one part right there and I'll highlight in a second. I split it this way, okay? And then I left that part the same. So you can see right here, and I'll highlight them different colors, that I split it into three equal parts, right? I have a yellow, a blue, and a green. Is this still thirds? That's my question. Let's think about what a fraction is. A fraction is a whole split into equal parts. So here's my whole, we call it a brownie if you want. Did I split it into three equal parts? And the answer is yes, because even though the parts don't look the same, they're each made out of three units, right? So my yellow part has three units. My blue part just looks different, but it's still one, two, three units. And my green part doesn't look the same as the yellow, but it's the same size because it's still made out of three units. So the yellow part is one third, the blue part is one third, and the green part is one third because I took my whole brownie and split it into three equal parts. So that's kind of our next level thought. Our fractional parts have to be equal, they have to be the same size, but they don't always have to look exactly the same like all the ones I showed you before. Here I have two holes, okay? I made one outline blue, so we're gonna get confused, and I outlined one in red, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and split the blue one up first, and we're gonna try to figure out whether or not we split it into equal parts and could call it a fraction. All right, so I just split in three parts and I highlighted them just so it wouldn't be so confusing. So I have a yellow part, a green part, and a blue part. So I split it into three parts and my question is, did I just make thirds, right? Because if you split a whole into three equal parts, it's a thirds. So go ahead and pause the video and think about that. Talk to a partner or a neighbor or even to yourself if you want to. Is this thirds, okay? And then push play on the video when you have an answer and you wanna check your answer. All right, so hopefully you just paused it and you thought about it. And this blue shape is not split into thirds. I do have three parts, but the yellow part is made up of two different sections. The green part is made up of two sections and the blue part is made up of four. So they're not equal, right? They don't look the same, but they're also not equal. So I cannot call this a fraction. All right, now let's take a look at this red hole. Okay, and let me split this up. And you can see I have my yellow part right here, my green part, my blue part, right? So I, again, I try to split this into three parts. So again, the question is, did I just represent thirds, right? Did I take a whole and split it into equal parts? So go ahead and pause the video, try to come up with an answer for this, and then push play when you're ready to check your answer. So hopefully you just thought about it. And for this one, I did split it up into thirds. Okay, because again, the fractional parts just have to be equal. They don't have to look exactly the same, right? So sometimes you get these messy fractions. So here my yellow part is worth four, right? My green part is also worth four, even though it's long and skinny, right? It's still an equal part to the yellow part. And my blue section or my blue region is also made up of four. So all of them are made up of four even though the green and blue ones don't look exactly like the yellow ones. So for this one, I can say I split up into thirds, which means my unit fraction be one third. The yellow part is one third of the whole, the green part is one third of the whole, and the blue part is one third of the whole. So that's just some next level thinking right there. But the key thought to remember is that a fraction is when we take a whole and split it up into equal parts or equal regions. And a unit fraction is how much one equal part of that whole is worth. Check out our other videos to continue your fraction knowledge. We really, really appreciate you coming to hang out with us today. We know there's lots of different options online. Check out our other videos and songs. Check out our online store. Get some Instructed Beats merch. And as always, please like and subscribe. Again, thank you so much. Instructed Beats out.